my name is Awan and I'm working on Blow and Fly, which is such a buggy game that it even has a bug in its title. However, we programmers know that every bug can be turned into a feature. In order to do that, we need to pretend that this is the way it's supposed to work and to teach our users how to cope with it. When I showed the early version of this game to my friends, the very first problem they faced is that it isn't a typical platformer. In Blown Fly, you can't just press left to move left and right to move right and then space to go into the air. Instead, it needs to be played a little more like golf or pool. You need to stay in a place, aim and then jump in order to fly in the opposite direction. With that in mind, I made a tutorial sign which imitates the intended way to play this game. Someone wise once said that a picture is worth a thousand words, so I think that this visual representation is much better than typing everything I've just mentioned in the form of text. The next thing I thought I had to teach the players is relying on physics. I made a level which is probably impossible to beat unless you understand that you need to roll backwards in order for the fish to stop. It's probably a little too hard for where it is in the game, but unless you understand this fundamental concept, you will have huge problems in the rest of the game. After that, I looked at some mobile games which use a similar launchable mechanic and tried to figure out what do they teach their players. And the very first thing that catches the eye is the trajectory of a projectile you're about to launch. I found this great tutorial on trajectory prediction in Unity and I had the system in my game in just a few hours. However, something felt wrong. I thought that maybe it was the visuals, so I went through a few different options, but it still didn't feel right. I realized that this isn't what Blow and Fly is all about. It's about experimentation, it's about bouncing off the walls and just seeing what happens. Being able to know where exactly you will land just took all the fun out of it. This definitely makes the game easier and it could work as some accessibility option, for example, but I think that I'll completely remove it from the game because it just makes it boring. And the reason that allowed me to ditch this new system so easily is that there is already a better system in the game. It's the Ghostfish that I mentioned in one of the earlier devlogs. It still shows you where you will land and allows you to make safe jumps, but it comes with some consequences which make it interesting. One of them is that it doesn't give you all the information immediately. You need to decide whether you want to wait for the Ghostfish to land before jumping yourself or just risk it and probably have more fun in the process. And another one is that it doesn't work in every scenario. For instance, there are many mid-air jumps where you need to react quickly and the goldfish just won't be able to help you. And a very similar thing happened to me in my life. I recently left a predictable part-time job that I could make a living with in order to dedicate myself to an unpredictable but much more exciting gaming industry. In this situation, there are tiny trajectory prediction systems that help me make sure that I'll stay afloat and make games for as long as possible. Among these are the things that I'm not too proud of asking for, but they count. These are the amount of wishlists on my games, the amount of views on my videos, and of course the people who decided to support me by either buying my games or donating to me on Patreon like these awesome people. So huge thanks to them. Huge thanks to you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.